Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to your live Investment Dominator Q&A call. And uh, again, I'm Warren Davis, and we are here on this beautiful Monday. It is the 17th of June, and uh, glad that uh, we have all of you on the phone. Thank you so much, Brian. Brian, <laughs> he's kind of ahead of the game, said... He can hear me fine from all the way from Arkansas. That's really nice. Thank you, Brian. The first thing I want to do is do a sound check and make sure everybody can hear me and see my screen. I'm the have the LPG deal flow here up, and so we're going to get your questions answered. Um, I didn't get a count of how many brand new people that we have uh, on the line, but uh, if you are brand new and you've never sent in questions. I have now, I'm showing my send me your questions. So you would basically type your questions into the box on your command um, section of your screen and just hit send and the questions will appear or any comments. And uh, and Brian has already given me a couple of good comments there on the sound check and the screen. So I'm, I'm pretty sure all of you can see my screen. So our intention here to answer all of your questions that you have regarding the investment dominator we're here to support you in that area as well as deal with some of the questions that you might have with the lpg deal flow or uh, issues that you might be encountering you know importing records so we're going to be going over some of that again uh today because we we keep getting questions around specifically around importing but i just wanted to let you know those of you that may be brand new these calls are recorded we have calls a call on monday um, the one you're on right now at 5 p.m. Eastern, uh, excuse me, Pacific time. And we have another call at 12 noon on Thursdays, Pacific time. And so they are they are recorded. So if you miss a call, you can always go back and see the contents of the call, see what we covered on that call. And then you can also all have timestamps associated with each question that we answered. So you can go right to that particular section of the recording and you don't have to listen to the whole thing in order to get your questions answered. So hopefully that will help uh, in going forward. And just uh, just so you know, see I'm showing my investment dominator screen here right now. And wanted to make sure that uh, the new folks know also that uh, if you wanna put in a, uh, suggest a feature, we have a lot of good comments regarding features that uh, individuals wanna suggest around the investment dominator. You can just type in, you go to your help function, as I just did. I selected the help up here in the right-hand corner, and this goes to suggest a feature. And then we want you to describe the feature that you are wishing to see on Investment Dominator. We can't guarantee that it's actually going to be implemented, but we will do our very best to have it, uh, you know, Alex looks at these and is, uh, you know, very seriously about, uh, you know, some of your suggestions that have come through. He's actually, you know, implemented many of them even for the year 2019. So now that's different. Suggesting a feature is different than if you have a support ticket, if you have some kind of a of a, um, a performance issue or a hardware issue or something like that, and you, you want uh, help with that, we, um, we have uh, a place for you to create a support ticket and you'll let us know the platform you're using, et cetera. And please describe, you know, in as much detail as you can, the issue that you're having. And uh, we'll just go on and get right into our answering our questions. We've already got some questions that have started to come in so far. And okay, yes, um, thank you, Henry. We'll be getting to another section uh, just as we cover. Uh, that has to do with your domain names, and uh, I will definitely be able to answer your question there. One of the first questions is what I do normally, uh, as you all know, uh, those of you that have been on the call for a while, I try to go back and make sure I get all any questions that was asked, like let's say on Thursday afternoon of last week, I try to get those questions answered so it makes sure that uh, you know whoever may log in and want to want to hear the answer to their question. If I didn't get it answered on Thursday, I will you know, do my best to answer it, uh, you know, get it answered by today. And any questions I can't answer uh, because of running out of time or even if I if I just don't know the answer and I need to research, I'll have it ready 
the answer ready for you by Thursday. That's what I um, commit to do. But hopefully we can get your questions answered online here. Uh, one of the first questions we had came from Scott uh, on or an individual named Scott uh, on I think it was last week regarding the view function on the land deals record. So we're going to look at that real quick. Um, it's been there for a while, but he's talking about right here. So you see, I went to my land deals. All I did was hit the green land deals. And here we have the view function. And when you select that view function, as you can see, these are the custom columns. So what this is, is as you notice here, I have an ID record, I have a status, owner, state. This has to do with the display of your data here. Now the fields on the view that we have as default, you see they're checked. Notice is the ID, the status, name, state, county. If I go back out, status, the owner's name, state, county, all in a row here. So these are fields that you want to display on your land deals record. And some users have, have a need to want to display something, some additional field. So the ones we have checked here are usually, they're the default ones, and they're the ones that we use most often um, in our land deal and our land deal transactions. So that's why they, they're the ones that are defaulted or we select them first. But let's say you wanted to see um, city and you wanted to have that in your display for whatever reason, then you would simply check city and hit save. And what happens is automatically investment dominator now, any fields that are populated with city now end up in your display. So that's simply what this view function is about is it lets you determine which fields specifically you want to use. And right, right now, if you're brand new, you know, you can go in and keep them at the default level. Um, if you've selected a whole bunch of fields and you say, oh, wow, I, I'm trying to remember which ones um, did I default or were the default fields. All you have to do is go over here and you can say reset to default. And the investment dominator knows the fields that we already have defaulted and it will set your screen back to the original defaulted fields. And as you can see, I think it does an automatic save um, of those fields so that you don't even have to worry about doing that. Uh, so basically that's the view function and hopefully that's helpful for Scott to, uh, to know exactly how to use that view function and anyone else that wants to go in there and change their displays. Uh, next question that we had came from um, uh, one of our recent or one of our most, uh, I say, faithful listeners. And I don't know, I'm not sure if this was you, Brian, in Arkansas, but it, it was a, a while back that this question came through, how to generate a contact list automatically in the investment dominator. And basically when we, we did demo how you would import, okay, Thank you, Brian. Maybe it was, no, it was another Brian. We do have a couple of Brian's that are on the <laughs> on the call. And uh, then we also have Eileen and Irene. So a couple of times I've gotten those names confused. And uh, I, Irene, I think, uh, wrote me and said, no, that wasn't my question, Warren. But in any case, we are talking about the uh, generating the contact list. And I did demo how to generate the contact list under the buyers tab. So this is your tab where you would have your different contacts. Um, basically, um, if the only way to generate this automatically, because what, what I did uh, show you at the time was how you would import basically a list of contacts. And if uh, we went in here and I went under the buyers tab and I went under import, okay, there's a, uh, a sample list that shows you what order the fields should be in if you want them, you know, want to import a sample buyers list or contacts and it creates a CSV file for you. You open that and it'll just give you an idea. Um, these are the fields that need to be in there for you to create, you know, your contacts. All right. So 
that's how you would do it if you wanted to import a whole bunch of contacts into the investment dominator for you know potential buyers okay those would be your potential buyers so what we're talking about here though now is how do you do this how do you generate this list automatically you know this buyers list or you know your different buyers well that's done actually the only way i've been able to see is through your opt-in page so you have under my sites and we're going to look in opt-in page and as you can see this page associated with my selling site comes up and automatically what would go into your buyers list is when someone puts in their first name they can put their first and last name here and they enter their email address and then they go into your sites to view any of the deals that you have available so once they put in their name their email address what investment dominator does is it's going to create a buyer's record for that particular person um, and especially if they were to select a particular land or parcel that they're interested in seeing um, this record gets created automatically in the investment dominator so I'm, I'm hoping that helps answer the question for Brian because uh, so far as I know to do this automatically that's the that's about the best way that I've been able to see so far. Okay, and again, we're going to get to we're going to get to the qu some questions on the uh, website domains here in just just a few moments. Okay, so just be patient with me. I'm just making sure I capture all the questions from last week. So we had another question: How to avoid creating duplicate contact records? So again, that's um, that's around this buyer's list. You know, these are your contacts. Now, what happens, individuals end up with duplicate contact records. If you do it via the import feature, where you put bring in your list, and what would happen is you'd have this on a, as a .csv file. You'd come in here and you say, choose file. And, um, you know, right now I don't have anything set up, but, what would happen, um, Investment Dominator would take in your, your .csv file, or your Excel file, and would basically, let's see here, I'll try to get to one where I can show you, give you an idea of what it would be like. But Investment Dominator is going to bring in that .csv file for you. Let's see if I have one set up and demo files. Let's see. Mm. Okay. If I wanted to, to remember where I had that sample list, let's see, neighbor letters. Let's see if this is. one that would work and if i say upload the list okay that must not have been a good list but in any case if you if you import a list that's exactly how you do you come in the import and then you would choose the file that you want to import what would happen is and once you say upload list investment dominator would upload that list and put all of your new buyers into this particular screen. Now, what we're talking about here is sometimes, you know, Investment Dominator would keep track of any duplicates automatically. So using your import function, you'll, you'll never have, you shouldn't have duplicate records. You should only have one buyer record for each, um, each entry that Investment Dominator file, finds in your CSV file. But the way, that uh, there's two ways that duplicate records is created. If you have a seller, sometimes you have a seller, and I mean, yes, a seller that comes in to your, um, your site and they actually opt in, you know, some, and, and this is really supposed to be your site for your buyers to, to opt in, but sometimes sellers, come in and they will opt in 
and they'll enter their first name, last name, and they'll enter their email address, and they'll be looking at your selling site. We don't really want that to happen, but sometimes it does. In that case, the first thing Investment Dominator is going to do is it's going to create, it's going to add them as a contact. So it'll be just like as if you went in here and physically put them in as a contact. That's one way that you get duplicate contact records in your investment dominator where you you know it's multiple records with the same contact. The other way is if you have a member of your team or you have an admin or either yourself or you know someone that's working with you, they come in here and they say add contact and they go ahead and select, you know, they might select buyer and they'll put in the person's lead source and they'll put in the person's first name, last name, etc. And then come down at the bottom and uh, you know finish and add the contact. Those are the two ways that you end up um, adding contacts and duplicating contacts. So just so you know, if you want to make sure that you don't have any duplicate contact records, the the best thing to do if you if you know the person's name that you're going to add is to come in here into your land deals record and just do a quick search. You know, I can search by, you know, by last name. And if I say, you know, I want to know if Banks is in there and I'm going to search and, you know, Carol Banks will show up. So that's the that's the best way to keep from having duplicate records is just to come in before you do um, an ad contact and make sure that that person is not showing up in your land deals records. Um, you can also search for them. I think you can search for them here too. So you could search for them in your actual buyer's list. It's the best thing to do is just, just do a quick search and see if you find anyone that you're about to add a contact. And as long as, you know, no records come back, um, you know, you can go for it. So hopefully that will, uh, that will help clear up, um, any confusion on adding multiple contact records? Very good. Okay. Now, we had another question that came in. Okay. Over the even over the weekend, um, we had a question. We had a couple of questions regarding importing records into the investment dominator, and you know we've gone we've gone over this a, a few times however it's just normal it's normal especially if you're just getting into this business to have a little confusion around this so basically there's two different ways that you can get records into the investment dominator now some of you have opted like like you have you have a county and what i've been hearing is that um you've gone into the import and you've imported like maybe you know a few thousand records like using this choose file and then you select you know your records and just to give you an idea here i have one record here or one list that has about 4500 records let me choose all of my files okay and if I were to import that, now I'm not seeing it, but uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah, here it is right here. So this sample import, as you can see, it has four, it's 5,450 records. So if I were to import that, if I were to select that and it's going to be, you know, and choose that file. Then I'm going to say upload list. It's going to import into my investment dominator all 5,400 of these prospect records. Well, I myself, I'm using letternet, letterprinting.net. And I know a lot of you out there using the same, your mail house where you have someone assisting you in mailing out your, your neutral letters. So if I have all of these prospect records now in my investment dominator, I don't want to, I don't want to mail out, you know, 5,000 records, <laughs> not, hopefully not, not at one time. Um, I, 
I've heard a couple of people have, have actually, you know, mailed out several thousand records and the call volumes that comes by is just, just more than we can handle. So, but if you, if you have a lot of records, prospect records in your investment dominator, the one way that you can select these records is if you know exactly, you know, either the county they're in and you want so many records selected. I'm just going to do this as an example here. Just remember, I'm at the um, land deals record level here, and I'm going to use these commands up here, which are for any records I select. These commands up top here, these are what they call a bulk command they're based on your status so i'm not going to use those at this point i'm just going to select these records that i have here um, just so just so you can see what i'm doing um, and what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to export and it's going to create a csv file for me now you notice i have one two three four five six records and the ones i selected are going to end up in my dot CSV, which is an Excel file, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, those records. And what Investment Dominator does, it puts a unique identifier on each record, each of my prospect records. So what I would do here at this point, now that I've selected my records that I want to send to Letternet Printing, I would save this file as you know some kind of um, name that I may choose to save it as. Uh, and let's just say, I don't want to save it there. I'm just doing a test here. So, import, okay. So I just, these are records that I've exported out of Investment Dominator. And I just want, I want to call them maybe county, Duval number one, and I might put the date on there. Okay, so this is the file I would I would save, and and it's the file I would send out to Letternet Printing. So now I've selected those six records. But I want to make sure that when I come in here next week to do another uh, export of records to that particular um, to letternet printing, I don't select the same six records again. So in that case, um, what I want to make sure is that these records go to the next status. So at this level again, because I've generated all these, you know, I have these six records, I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to say change status. And what's going to happen is I want to change the status to mail letter one. So that's going to get them out of the prospect and it's going to move them into mail letter one. So next week, there's no chance of me selecting the same prospect records again. So now I just did this for six records. But if I had if I had selected, you know, 200 records or 300 records, I'd be doing it for those 300 records. You always want to make sure the last step you do, once you have your .csv file and you're going to send that to Letternet Printing, make sure the last thing you do is to come in and update that status, change your status to mail letter one. So that's your next status. Um, now, if you're not using Letternet Printing, and you actually want, you know, some people are printing the letters themselves. So um, what I would do in that case, I'm, I've selected my records here. I'm not going to export them because I don't want to send them a letter net printing. I want to actually print them. So I'm going to do my generate documents. And under generate documents, uh, all of those six records should end up as documents that I'm going to send out. Okay. And this is what uh, this is what would be printing out. So if I wanted to print these records myself, um, 
they're you know they're ready to go of course they would have my signature and i think when i enable editing there you go my signature shows up so this is actually what i would print if i was doing the printing myself those six records all right so i just want to make make sure that first of all we we understand if you're doing method number one where you have a whole bunch of records in your investment dominator how you select certain ones that you want to print then you change the status to mail letter one right and so that you make sure you won't you won't select those same records you know next week okay so that's the first method now um, I'm gonna attempt to <laughs> I was tempted to do this kind of quickly here on the second method. There's, a, there's another method, which, which is the one that I personally employ myself, is where I'm importing records that I plan to send out to Investment Dominator, and those are the only ones I import. And that's what I've been sharing with people. I think that's the, that's the best way, is you only want to select records um, that you're planning to actually send out. So again, what I would do, let's see here. I'm going to go into my .csv file that I'm going to actually send out. And I've got to find it here again. And now understand this is just a suggestion for you folks you know you can you can uh you know it's your business you can do however you want i'm just i'm just giving you an idea i'm sharing you with you what i do each week so that um you know you'll get an idea of how i process so i make sure i only get the records that i want so let's say out of this um 4,500 records, let's see. Well, I made one, I made one up here. So this Putnam, so out of my, out of my, out of a main list of records that I have, that I have in what I call investment dominator ready mode. That means that it has type, first name, last name, company, address, etc. I have a list of my maybe, 4,500 or maybe, well, and in some cases, 30,000 records. So this is a sample import list, right, that has 5,000 records in it. So out of my main list, I'm going to select, you know, so many records that I want to move to letterprinting.net. Of course, I see, you know, you see a lot of duplicates here, so this is not the way mine would actually look. But once I select these records, what I do personally, I will also, I have an interim investment dominator import file. And all I'm going to do, and again, this is my process, you know, you all are more than welcome to do it any way you like. What I will do is I'll copy, so I'm just doing a control C in Excel. I will copy these records into my interim investment dominator, right? So I've got these records now. And these are the, these are the only records that I want to send to letternet printing for this week. So I've kept track now. I've got these records selected. They're in my interim. I'll go back to my data file, which has the original. What I do is I will just color them red. Just simple as that. And then I will save the file. And I'll say yes. I'll save that file. So the next time when I come in the next week, if I want to continue processing, I'll just start with the next record. And I'll go down and select, you know, select my new records. So I keep track of the records that I've already processed. And so I have a major file that it may have 30,000, maybe, you know, uh, we've had some that has 25,000 records in it. 
and we try to send out approximately 500 a week. You know, we send anywhere out between 450, 500 a week. And I'll make sure that I keep track of those records that I've already sent out. Just that simple. And I keep my investment dominator and, and then I will save this as, you know, let's say my Putnam investment dominator import. Okay. Let me, so let me just go on and save it as I've already got a putting them one, so I'll put putting them county import number two, and I usually put the date on it. And so this is the actual record, or these are the actual records I will import. And when I go back into Investment Dominator, and I import, I'm going to choose one of those files that I just created for this week, you know, and I'll select it. You know, I have Putnam County here, Investment Dominator, I think it's number two. Yep, that's the one I just created. And I'll just double click on that. It comes in and I'll just do my upload list. Now, I'm not going to do it here so that I don't, you know, bring in a lot of records I don't want. But I, I bring those records into Investment Dominator. And then once I, I've brought all these records into Investment Dominator, now they're, they're going to be the ones that are um, in prospect status. These are all my, you know, be all my prospect records. So I will use the bulk level uh, generate documents here. And when I... Uh, use the bulk level generate documents you know it creates for me with all my neutralizers it creates for me this dot csv file here of all of my prospect records and so i will then open this file and So it has it has any of the records that were prospects, you know, that I that I said in prospect status. It assigns this order ID over here in column A, and I will save this file. And this is the file that I send to Letternet Printing, so that they're aware of, um, you know, the records that I want to send out. And now that's that's my process every single week. And um, hopefully, you know, you can go back and review this at any time and. You know, check out, you know, this is how I do it. You you can, like I say, you can do it any way you like. The most important thing, one of the most important things to do, though, once you're done with this dot, you, you've generated your dot CSV file here. You've generated that file. Come over here and you do your bulk update records because that's going to move these records to the next status. And it says, I've got 13 records. I'm going to move from prospect status to mail letter one, and it does it for you automatically. Now, this is the step that a lot of folks forget, is to move these records to the next status. And once I do that, I'm done for the week. You know, th those records are going to letternet printing. I send them the CSV file, and I have another neutral letter template that uh, I send them. And I send them my, my template envelope. This is what goes to letternet printing every week. These three pieces of data. Your neutral letter template, neutral letter envelope, and your .csv. And that's how I, I handle importing um, records. So that's two, two different ways I've shown you there. And I want you to be able to go back and uh, review this at your leisure. And hopefully, it'll clear up some questions about uh, the importing process. OK. All right, now we get into actually. Um, Henry's question, very good question, Henry, on the neutral letter that you generate from within the CRM. It, it shows your website as Investment Dominator instead of showing your domain name. And any ideas on the fix? Yes. Uh, 
the neutral letter is doing that. Okay. Probably, and, and I'm taking a guess here, it's showing, I'm just going to write down your question here. It's showing investment dominator instead of your actual domain name. So I'm, I'm thinking that what you're telling me is that when you select your neutral letter, let's say I'm just going to select one here. I'm going to generate documents. And I'm going to open this document up. It's got one letter in there for a neutral letter. And so I'm, if I'm getting the question correct, I'm assuming you're saying instead of it showing an actual name of your domain, your website here, it's showing investment dominator. Um, and that tells me if that's what it's doing, that's telling me that under your customized sites here, let's say you're buying, um, this domain name, see your default buying site domain name, be, when, before you get everything done, your default name is investment dominator. And so what has to happen now, um, if you've purchased a domain name from GoDaddy or from some other provider of your domain name, this name has to be updated and again, it's under my you know website buying and my website selling names. Um, but okay, let's see. I, I just want to I'm going to make sure that you've done your steps uh, because you should have a domain name in here for your selling site, and you should have a domain name in here for your buying site. And again, all I did was go under customize. And it lists these different settings or these different uh, selections. And I selected the website buying. So in order for you to, you know, to get that all set up correct, um, let's see, what's the best thing, best way to, to show this one is I'm going to go in our, under our user guide and I'm going to search, you know, domain names hopefully this will bring me up okay so this brings up so all I did was I went into the search and I selected I typed in domain names and it'll tell you how to change your website's custom domains and then it it brings you to this particular screen here which has an article um, okay Okay, well, it's okay. So let's see here. So again, that's a good question, Henry. Why would it have changed? So Henry's saying that he did update the name about two weeks ago. Um, update the domain name a couple of weeks back. And it's changed now back. Sometimes, Henry, um, I'm not saying this is exactly what happened in your case, but occasionally, well, let me get back to, sometimes people overlook, um, yeah, and you tell me if this, this might've been the case, but once they make these changes here, uh, and it, it appears to update, but then you have to scroll all the way down and you can't forget to, and this is like way down the bottom, you can't forget to update the site. And, that's that's probably you know eight out of ten times um, individuals they they come in and they make the changes on these sites they you know change their banner etc and they change their logo and update their domain names and forget about updating the site and that's the only thing that I would think that uh, if it if it went back to the investment dominator which is your default your default domain that gets put in here. If it went back to that, that's probably, you know, you updated it here like you should, you know, correctly, but um, it went back to the, 
Uh, well, I don't want to really want to do that. Uh, change your domain. Yeah. So if you're, you know, if you if you've done this change buying site domain, and this would have been investment dominator at the time, and then you put in your new domain name here, and um, then you say, you know, basically you say update. And right now it doesn't have that because I've got an older and a new buying seller site domain name there. So if you did that, it would have um, it should have updated your name. But once you get out of here, it would it would be here correctly. But you can't forget to go down to the bottom and update the site. Any changes you make, you always want to make sure you update your site. So I'm thinking that that might have been um, what may have happened to um, to have it change back to the investment dominator. And uh, if there's anything, if there's anything that uh, other than that, that that took place, if you don't remember changing it and you feel like, you know, hey, the system didn't take my update, make sure you come up here under help and put in a support ticket and let us, you know, let uh, Alex and company check that out for you to make sure that, uh, you know, the system didn't malfunction in some way. All right. So hopefully that will uh, help uh, give you a little insight there. Um, we have a we've had some questions around the SSL certificates. Um, okay, so um, I do the investment dominator WWC name. Okay, okay, so. Henry, you're saying you're getting the invalid, the new domain name is invalid, so please try again. So if you're receiving that, if you're seeing that error message um, and you have gone through the steps to point your custom domain to the investment dominator via the WC name record, if you've done those steps and you're still getting that, we want you to want you to put in a ticket for that and uh, let us look into it with within your account. Um, obviously I can't go into that here, but I can definitely, if you create a ticket, um, Alex and company can definitely access your account. Um, and so when, what you do, if you have a domain name, okay, very good. Said he created a ticket already. If you've done that, then they will be looking at it. Um, but you got the record or the message, please try again. So what you do, if you if you get that kind of message, I just want to make sure everybody knows at this point, definitely put in a support ticket and you do that by coming in to help and create a support ticket and they will uh, find out what's at the bottom of that. Sorry that you're having that kind of uh, that kind of issue there. That can be kind of a little frustrating, I'm sure. So the next question that we had to deal with, I tell you, our time is really moving by here, is uh, there's a new, well, an updated um, feature in terms of SSL certificates. And we just want to make sure everybody's aware of this, especially that are on this call. You can now, um, you know, Jack Bosch and company has actually made it a way for you to have two free SSL certificates, you know, one for your buying site and one for your selling site. So uh, going forward, there's no need for you to actually have to having to purchase an SSL certificate. And for those of you that may not actually understand what the SSL certificate is here, we're just talking about your different sites being secured. Right now, um, as you can see, there's this little lock that's associated with what we call my URL here. There's a little lock, and this lock means that this is a secured site. And it also has your, you know, your URL will begin with HTTPS. If this was not secured, you would see um, just HTTP. And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here. 
Let's see if I look at uh, this particular site here. Not the one that I wanted to see. Um, hmm. Okay. I will look at another investment dominator site here. Still showing up as cured. <laughs> okay. Let me get an example of one here. That is not. Um, let's see. Let's see here. Let's see if this works for us. No, it did not. So let's see. One. Let's see. Okay. Thought I had some sites here that I could show you. In any case, what, what I'm trying to show you, if 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 it were not secure, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, this is an example. So you see here where instead of okay, associated with this name, this URL, you see where it says not secure. So the SSL certificate is now, once you have installed your SSL certificate, it's the security certificate. So it's going to show up now as HTTPS and you should no longer see not secure. That's that's good. Um, it's good to have that because some people just only want to do business on a site that they consider to be secured, even though they're not putting in money. Um, you know, they don't want to have anything funny happen as they log on to your site. So some it's better to have a an SSL security uh, set up. And, how, and the way you would do this in the investment dominator, if you have not already set up your SSL, now those of you that already have, you've already purchased one, you know, we'd already purchased one, so it wouldn't apply to us, but um, let's see. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna search install SSL for custom, domains. I'll just put in SSL for custom. And it says here, it brings up these different articles, generate the, install the SSL certificate for your custom domains. So this is an entire article that will tell you how you want to make sure you have an SSL security so that it's HTTPS as opposed to just saying not secured. So how do you generate that? Okay, one of the first steps, and this is something that you know Henry is already taken care of on on his uh, his site. But one of the first things that you want to do is to install the, the free certificate. You want to configure your custom domains, and we've already we've gone through this on another call, so I'm not going to go through all these steps. But this is where you get into setting up your custom domains, and you're pointing your WWC name record to Investment Dominator. Um, going through these steps on GoDaddy to handle, um, you know, making sure you're doing your forwarding, your forwarding is set up. So I'm not going to go through all of these steps here. What I will say is that if you want to basically get a, a detailed explanation of all of these steps, you're more than welcome to go back to the user guide, you're more than welcome to search for the 2019-05, let's see, I think it was the 27th. So I did, I did an extensive, you know, step-by-step -step on exactly how to change your buying and selling websites domain. And it starts, you can start it at the 40, 44 minutes into the call. 
So if you started at 44 minutes into the call, it will go through in detail um, basically those steps that we just we were just looking at. Okay, you installing. It will go through all of the instructions that are posted here on how to install your domain names. Once that is set up, once you've already gone through these steps with GoDaddy and you've gone through these steps on the site, you can then click here to secure your site domain. So I'll, I'll kind of quickly go through the steps, but it's right now on this particular site since um, it is already, I already have a domain name set up. As you can see, I have a domain name set up. But if if I didn't, I would come in here to secure your your domain. Now this is how you get your SSL, your free SSL security certificate, okay? And uh, so it's telling me to, I could, if normally what you would see here would be a generate SSL security, just like you see here, click here to secure your domain. Then after you click there, you would click here to generate your free SSL. And so this is going to save you some money. It's going to save you a little time, make it much faster for you. So basically, I want you I want to refer you to this particular article that's on the on our website. If you it's on the um, the user guide. So if you have any problems at all, don't hesitate to put in a ticket, but it should go pretty smoothly if you have not already set up like in this particular instance, I already have one set up. And uh, it's telling me it's going to it's going to expire in 89 days. So, um, but if I didn't, this tells you how to actually, if if you don't want to use the free one up here, it tells you how the steps you can go through to generate your own. You know, you get your your CSR file, and here are the instructions to generate that file. And once you've generated your your dot cert um, you can upload the dot cert using these instructions here. So hopefully, now again, I would, if I were you, I would go on and use the free one and you don't have to worry about, you know, going, uh, dealing with GoDaddy and paying anything with GoDaddy. Um, you can then come in here and you get your SSL security set up. And so basically, your site will be secured, and obviously we would do this for, let me cancel out of this. You wanna do this, secure your domain for your buying site, and secure your domain for your selling site. Same thing. So you would come in here, ah, that's what it would say. So if I wanted to come in here and generate. Now, just so you know, just I'm gonna demonstrate this for you real quickly because I already have one set up. So if I try to generate this SSL, it should give me a real funny error message, okay? Like this, following errors reported because basically it's confused. I've already, I already have my SSL generated and I'm trying to generate another one. So don't do that. If you've already got a domain name and you've already got one uh, an SSL security set up. Okay, so we're getting down here to the wire, and um, let's see. Make sure I covered everything on that. So you'll get you'll get, and like I said, you'll get that error if you've already have one set up. So don't worry about doing that a second time. And the only other questions that we had um, today has to do with uh, some some folks are ready to actually start answering you know calls on their phone to sellers and to buyers. And I was going to just give you real quick and take a few moments here how to answer some questions and what type of questions come from buyers. 
we did a segment, uh, I think it was a week or so ago on, you know, how to answer sellers questions. But if you have your phone rings, if you, if you know, if you've marketed your property and now you're ready for people that they're going to get on your site now and they want to come in and start viewing the deals that you have available, right? So in order for me to do this, okay. Okay, H. Okay, so if I fill in an email address and I put in this name, it's going to, my site should take me <clears throat> to all the great deals that I have set up on this site. All right, and so as you can see, um, we've come into this particular site and the buyers then will start to look at your properties and one of the very first questions that they ask you are, you know, is what the property is zoned for. And so it's good, it's good to have a lot of insight into your properties so that you know when you're, you're speaking to a buyer about a particular parcel that you know it's is it zoned for agricultural, is it zoned for residential, et cetera. They want to know as much information as you will know about you know that particular parcel that they're interested in purchasing. And and so on a lot of uh, one of the main questions we get um, when buyers call us, the, one of the main statements they'll make is, I've never done this before. So they'll want to know what is your process for me purchasing, you know, purchasing this land? What what do I need to do to purchase this land? And folks, a lot of folks, a lot of people will ask you that question and they haven't even looked at the property. So they they basically, one of the first things you want to do before you get all excited about the fact this person wants to buy my land is make sure that they have viewed the land themselves. Make sure that they, you know, you sent them an email that has the either the address of the property or directions to the property that they've actually been able to go out and look at the property and they, um, you know, before they get all excited about buying it and they'll say, well, what, you know, and, and, and sending you offers, you know, either via email or over Facebook. Um, some buyers will actually do that. They'll try to offer you something on property that they haven't even seen. But we always direct them to go out and look at the property first and make sure that that's what they're, they want before they actually, uh, you know, send you any offers on the property. And so that's some of the, that's one of the questions you'll get. Um, you'll also get a question, you know, about the difference between, you know, can a manufactured home go on this or a modular home? So you kind of need to do your homework and know what is a manufactured home. You know, um, actually a manufactured home is like a trailer. So it has it's a home that has any has an axle um, and it's actually brought to the site. Um, pulled there by a truck. So that's a manufactured home. Versus testing, testing. OK, sorry about that. Um, I was saying that they will ask you, you know, the difference between a manufactured and a modular home. You know, a modular home is ones that they they bring to the site and they put them together on the actual land property, but they ship them via truck in sections. So a lot of the, the uh, sellers are not, or the buyers are not familiar with the difference between a manufactured home versus a modular home. So these are just a few of the questions. I'm gonna do another whole segment on this on another day as um, because some of you are starting to get to the point where you're marketing property and you're selling your property. So we wanna get you prepared for the kinds of questions that you will be answered. Uh, you will be asked to answer um, and we're right at the time where we have to wrap it up here. So uh, thank you for your questions that came in today. Don't forget to send in your questions, um, you know, via uh, the system, and I can have them prepared to, you know, have those questions answered on the next call. So I just want to leave you with this thought before we get off the call today. Um, this came from a, I think he's a philosopher. It says, if you really want to do something, you'll find a way. 
if you don't, you'll find an excuse. So I want you to know that, uh, you know, I really appreciate being with you folks. You all are, are some brave folks. It takes it takes a lot of courage to get up and do a business um, like this where there's so many moving parts. But uh, just like John, Jim Ron says, if you really want to do something, you'll find a way. And if you don't, you'll find an excuse. So I want you to have a great uh, week and we will be back here. Thank you, Gidget. We will be back here on Thursday at 12 noon uh, to answer your questions. Don't forget to send them in so I'll have, uh, I can get them ready for you to answer on the Thursday call. Thanks everybody. Have a great evening. Bye now.